Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Borussia Nakobian. I'm at the World Chess Hall of Fame and uh, I'm here with uh, Francis Newman. Can you please tell us about this uh, beautiful artwork? Um, well, uh, I started out my career as a Duchamp scholar uh, and I became interested in chess when I was much younger. Uh, but I made a concerted effort to combine the two interests when I was already in graduate school uh, because I loved the work of Marcel Duchamp and I loved playing chess and thought that if I could uh, get into the mind of this artist, everybody had written about him already. So many articles, everybody trying to tell you exactly what they thought of Duchamp, and I thought I could develop a sort of unique approach by going through his chess games and seeing if I could get into his brain. Since he is, after all, the great conceptual artist of all time, if I could get into his gray matter, maybe I could come up with an insight as to why he was this great and venerated artist that he was. Uh, in the end, that didn't happen, since uh, uh, the games were against much more powerful players, and as a result, uh, he didn't play in the way I thought he would maybe be capable of doing with, with people more on his level. This ex exhibit consists entirely of paintings by uh, Tom Hackney with related materials, because the paintings themselves deal exclusively with the chess games of Marcel Duchamp. So, in order to supplement the exhibition, we put in a few works by Marcel Duchamp as well. A nephew of mine, Ambrose Nauman, he called me up and knew about my obsessive interest in two subjects, chess, which I play constantly with him online, and Marcel Duchamp. And he found a work of art that pulled the two together. And I get offered um, shows by different artists, maybe as many, and I'm not exaggerating, 10 a day. Artists somehow find my email through the website and they're offering me works of art, a lot from Russia, by the way. Uh, I usually have no choice but to erase them because if I answer every one of them, that would be impossible. And it will give them an idea that I'm interested in their work. So I'm more or less erasing all of them. But I think there's something to be said for the not being offered things and having the gallerist discover them. And when I, I didn't discover them, my nephew did, but when I found them, it, it was a aesthetic heart attack. I, I, it, it meant everything to me on two levels of my interest, and it brought them together in a single work of art. I never thought that could ever happen. Chess as a game, and, and only really, it seems, high-level chess players know this, is really an art. It can hit a level where the game is so beautiful, so intense, so refined, that you can't think of it on any other terms. You, you, you feel it in your gut. It's kind of, it has an aesthetic level that just it doesn't go away. I've replayed certain games so many times, and even some of the famous games, like the Immortal game or Bobby Fischer's famous game, I've played it enough to be able to memorize those games. And I can feel the beauty of that game. As I go through and move the piece, I feel it. And I can see the result of it by looking at times. And I don't know that any other artist had ever done that, not certainly for the history of chess. No, absolutely. Some of the, the most beautiful games played in the history of the game are just definitely the work of art because it's just something incredible. You see, like, uh, you know, like really uh, sacrifices and all this. There's just, oh, just uh, the beauty of the game. Yeah. So you can see. And I've asked uh, Tom Hackney, uh, there, there's a game that Duchamp played with a man named Smith, it's, and, and Duchamp won a beauty prize for this game. They actually awarded a game for aesthetics, which I think should be done again. I don't know, is that done today? There is some things, uh, something like that. They have some of the tournaments, they have the best game tournament prize, oh. the brilliancy prize. Oh, okay. So sometimes they have that in the tournaments. If you play a really nice game, you submit yeah. to the organizers, and then they have some committee, a couple of yeah. Grandmasters, they they choose. So I believe in a U.S. championship that was done a few years ago that there was the best game prize. I think it would be wonderful if that existed so that when that game was played, Tom Hackney painted it and then they gave that as the award. 
to the winner of the game at yeah, the end. Yeah, that'll be, that that'll, would be, that'll a, be very nice. And since I'm Tom Hackney's dealer, I would really like that. Now, how did you first uh, got in, interested in Duchamp's work and... Uh... And the game of chess? Well, it, it actually happened uh, when I was quite young, uh, right out of high school. That's when I learned about his work, but I had always been interested, and when I went to graduate school, I thought, well, this might be the opportunity to take that interest and put it and make it part of my art too. So I tried to do that, uh, not like Tom Hackney did, but I recreated a board, for example, where all the pieces were uh, just cubes and I wrote the names of the pieces on the top. So you would have to read the pieces as you move them, things like that, sort of lame things actually uh, that didn't quite work the way I had hoped they would. Uh, but then I thought, maybe I can understand Duchamp better by doing his games. Because every time I read about a chess player, they say, oh, he's aggressive, or he's passive, or he's Position. inventive and positional, all these things, the tactics. And I thought, well, maybe I can figure out what Duchamp's tactics were. So I started to try to collect his games. I spent a great deal of time and effort trying to do that. Because they were, at that time, you know, in the early 1970s, they weren't, you couldn't go on the internet, you couldn't find anything. You had to find the original magazine in which they were published. And I didn't have too many of them, uh, but I realized very early on that that would be impossible because he started playing professional chess where the games would be recorded in 1923 in, in Belgium. And he was playing far superior players. And you can't just be inventive as a chess player. You end up being pretty cautious if you're playing somebody who you know is a far better player than you are. So you didn't see Duchamp do experimental crazy things over the chessboard, so I wasn't really able to determine anything about his personality. But as time went on, I actually did discover that he had buried ideas of chess very deeply into his work. And there are at least two works of art that I decided I understood better than anyone else who had ever looked at them before because I understood how chess figured into making these objects. And that was a revelation. And one of them happens to be the announcement that I'm looking at right over your shoulder there on the left where you see a little cupid in the corner. Duchamp drew that cupid. But what few people know about that announcement is that if you hold it up against light, you can see a chessboard behind the cupid. And so I knew that the secret to understanding whatever that announcement was about was in that chessboard and how I could figure it out for myself. So that chessboard contains an end game problem which would defy anyone, even grandmasters such as yourself, to solve, because it's unsolvable. It says white to play and win, but white can never win. And I can't tell you how much time I spent trying to figure out that problem. Uh, I learned about it for the first time in the early 70s, and I actually worked on it for 30 years. I never, uh, whenever I moved anywhere, I'd set up a chessboard, set up that end game problem, and keep working on it and figured I could do it. I even entered into correspondence with Larry Evans over it. Larry Evans wrote back to me, wow, it's easy, and he gives me the nine moves. I said, wait, you forgot one move. And he writes back to me, are you a grandmaster? And I said, no, I'm nobody, I'm, I'm an amateur, but you forgot in move four this other possibility. And he, and he writes back to me, well, this is great. He said, let's publish it. So he published it in his magazine, Chess Life and Review. He was the editor of the column then. And I said, let's make it interesting. So a lot of people will answer, let's give a $15 reward. So he publishes it. And I got 100 possible solutions to that. Over half of them from prisoners in the United States. And I became terrified because those prisoners started calling me for the $15. They all made the same mistake that Larry Evans had made like on the fourth move. But I wasn't about to tell them that because they get, they get a, prisoners get a free call on Saturdays, so they were calling me and threatening me if I didn't send them $15. I looked up every prisoner's name, I sent them all $15 so that I would just not be in any trouble. But I still couldn't solve the problem. It was incredible. Then I got powerful chess computers came yes. along and then one of them, when they first came along, you remember you put the information into the computer and you could see it thinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, I put that information into one computer and five days later it was still thinking, not coming up because it had no way to do it. But then finally the new computers can tell you the exact you know, move and prove, yeah, if and there's you know, a win or a if draw. there's a win, and it's a draw in the end, of course, that's, that's yeah. what happens. But at least I found out the meaning of that work. But the real meaning didn't hit me until after I had solved, proven that that chess score couldn't be 
solved. That, that end game couldn't be solved. And that's because he drew a Cupid. I couldn't, you know, I should have asked myself that right from the beginning. Why does a chess player like Duchamp give you the solution to a game? He's giving you a solution, by the way, because a Cupid is shooting down with his arrow. And everybody knows in chess that pawns and pieces move down files. But Cupid never shoots down. A Cupid has to shoot at the person he's in love with, yeah. you know, or, or to, to make love happen. And that hit me. He was in love with a woman at the time named Maria Martins. She was married to the French ambassador to the United States and he couldn't have her because she had three kids and was married. And this was his secret way of expressing that he couldn't have her because he has a solution. Well, he, he's famous for a saying, everybody who knows Duchamp's work knows that he's famous for a saying of saying that there is no, no problem because there is no, there's no solution because there's no problem. If you look at a work of art and you don't understand it, everybody says, I don't get it, I don't get it. Well, they don't get it because they're assuming that that thing is offering them a problem and your job is to find the solution. But then he gives us a problem with no solution, which he had. He couldn't have that woman. He had a problem with no solution, so he gives you an end game that you just can't solve. Could you see yourself living with a, like, a reenactment of a game that you played? Would you? Yeah, yeah. I would love to see, let's say, one of my best games. I've been playing yeah. chess for 27 years, so one of my maybe best games yeah. on a, you know, painting like that, like a, something memorable game. That would be something that I would like to have in my house on the wall. Could a more beautiful game, chess-wise, also appear more beautiful as a painting? It's, it's possible, like one of the best games considered uh, in history is the game Kasparov played in yes. 1999 against the Polov. Yeah. This is a very famous game where he actually sacrifices a lot of material, drives opponent king That's all the way. That's the most incredible yeah. game. He all the way from C8, he is playing uh, white, so black king is on C8 drives it all the way to D1 and announces a checkmate with some really difficult moves. So that's, that could be actually yeah, a very good be, candidate. Yeah, because you'd be looking for the movement of that king uh, 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 as you, yeah, that's, that's actually. Game considered one of the yeah. best. Uh, but I'm wondering if aesthetically it would also appear just as beautiful. Uh, really enjoyed the work at the Hall of Fame and uh, look forward to seeing you in the future here. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, bye-bye.